All right, folks, we're back and we're continuing our discussion on solution concentration and we're quantifying it, remember. Um, if you recall the last video, we talked about uh, weight percent, mole fraction, and molarity. We said molarity is probably the most commonly used unit of solution concentration. Today we're going to talk about molality and we'll do something called dilution calculations, which I think you'll enjoy. They're fairly easy. So let's jump onto this with molality. Molality, um, the numerator is the same as it was for molarity. We have moles of solute on top. However, my denominator is kilograms of solvent. So remember with molarity, it was moles of solute per liter of solution. Molality is moles of solute per kilogram of just the solvent. Now, the symbol for molality is the small letter m. So we usually say molality equals moles per kilogram, keeping in mind that the, the numerator mole would be moles of solute, and my denominator kilogram would be kilograms of just the solvent. So let's jump right into one. Why don't you try example 10 on your own, find the molality of a solution, and I'm giving you grams of ethanol and grams of water. So pause the video, use this equation to see if you can find the molality of that solution in example 10. All right, welcome back. So we want moles of solute on top. So that would be my 15.0 grams of C2H5OH. We're going to hop out of grams of C2H5OH and get into moles of C2H5OH. Is that how you did it? All right. Let's figure out the molecular weight of ethanol, C2H5OH. So we'll use our periodic table. And we have carbon. There are two of those. They're 12.01 a piece. So we're going to have 12.01 times 2. So it's C2H5OH. So we have H1.01. And there's actually six of those because remember it's C2H5OH. So it's six times 1.01. Uh, so we have our H's in there, and then our oxygens, of course, are 16.00. So we'll add those together, and I get 46.08 grams per mole. Now you guys can check my math to make sure you guys get the same number. So grams of my solute, ethanol, are now canceled, and I'm in moles of solute, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want in my numerator. So all I need to do now is divide by kilograms of my solvent. So my solvent is water, and usually that's the case. And 350 grams is the same as 0 0.3500 kilograms. So we don't have to worry about the solute in my mass. We just want the solvent. So my unit will be moles per kilogram, which is molality. So let's see what we end up with. We have 15.0 divided by 46.08. And then we're going to divide that by 0.3500. It's like we're allowed three sig figs. Did you get 0 0.930 molal? So molal is sort of the short way of saying a molality of. I'll say molal. Some people pronounce it molol. Um, I usually say molal. All righty. Well, let's try another one. This time I'm going to give you the molality, and I'm going to give you the amount of solvent, and I want you to find the grams of solute. So that's an example 11. So it's a 0 0.50 molal solution. I have 750 grams of water. So remember, that's the same as 0.75 kilograms of water. And I want to know grams of acetic acid. All righty. So in this case, um, we're going to go ahead and we are going to start with our, um, our grams of water. We have our kilograms of water, I should say, 0.75 kilograms of solvent. And we're going to use molality as a conversion factor. 
So my molality here is 0 0.50. Isn't that 0 0.50 moles of acetic acid, HC2H3O2, per kilogram of solvent, which is my water. So I can use that as a nice conversion factor. I want to put kilograms of water on the bottom, and I want to put moles of acetic acid on top, HC2H3O2, and my molality is 0 0.50, so 0 0.50 moles per kilogram of water. So kilograms of water are gone, and I have moles of acetic acid. But I want grams of acetic acid. Well, I know, you guys are excited about this because we've been converting from moles to grams, it seems like, forever. So we're going to put moles of acetic acid on the bottom, HC2H3O2. We're going to hop into grams of acetic acid, HC2H3O2. And what's the molecular weight of acetic acid? Well, let's go back to our periodic table. Looks like we have two carbons, four hydrogens, and two oxygens. So, we have four hydrogens. Remember, each one's 1.01. .01. And let's see what else we have again. Uh, we have two carbons and two oxygens. So, two carbons, 12.01 apiece. And then two oxygens, 16.00 apiece. And I get 60.06 .06 grams per mole. 60.06 .06 grams per mole. So moles of acetic acid are gone, and I'll be in grams of acetic acid. Let me change colors so the other uh, writing isn't in the way now. I'll have grams of acetic acid, HC2H3O2. So let's see what that turns out to be. We have 0.75 times 0.5 times 60.06. Looks like I'm only allowed two significant figures here. And I end up with 22.52. So that rounds off to 23 grams of acetic acid in that solution. Okay? So that's molality. Moles of solute per kilograms of just the solvent. Now once again on your assignment coming up you're going to have a couple of these to do. So just consult your notes, come back to this video, and I think you'll have no problem with those. Now just a quick review on the units that we've talked about um, so far. We had percent by mass or percent by weight, and so that was the mass of my solute divided by the mass of the entire solution, and then we changed that to a percentage by multiplying by 100. After we did percent by mass, we did mole fraction. And so that could be the moles of my solute divided by the total moles of solution, or the moles of my solvent divided by uh, the moles of my solution. Okay, so we have that there. And we leave that as a fraction. We don't change it to a percentage. Then we talked about molarity. Uh, of course, we said that's symbolized by the capital letter M. And that's moles of solute divided by liters of the entire solution. So don't forget that. That's divided by liters of the whole solution, folks. And that's molarity. And that's the most common of all um, uh, concentration units. And then finally, molality. And so that's the small letter N. And if you remember, we just did that. That would be moles of solute in the numerator divided by, do you remember? That's right, kilograms of just the solvent. So those are my four units of concentration that are commonly used um, in chemistry. All right, one more thing I want to talk about today, and that is something called dilution. Dilution problems are actually quite common in the, in the laboratory. We are often given concentrated solutions, and for our laboratory procedure, we oftentimes need to dilute them to less concentrated solutions. So this equation I'm about to give you um, becomes very, very useful in the laboratory. Don't forget it. So I call this Smith's Magic Rule of Dilution. The only reason I call it Smith's Magic Rule of Dilution is he was my mentor, Mr. Richard Smith. He taught at Cottonwood High School for many years. His teaching career spanned 36 years, and he was my mentor, as I said, for about uh, 
boy, 20 of those years. At any rate, so in honor of him, I've called this Smith's magic rule of dilution. It simply states that the number of moles of solute before the dilution equal the number of moles of solute after the dilution. Now, it might look strange at first, but trust me, this equation, M1V1 equals M2V2, means moles before equals moles after. See, what unit do I get when I multiply molarity times volume? Well, let's do that up here. Molarity is moles per liter, right? And volume is liters. So if I multiply molarity, moles per liter times liters, don't liters divide out? And don't I get moles? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, let's look at the other side of the equation, M2. Wouldn't that be, uh, M2 would be molarity 2. Wouldn't that be moles per liter times V2? Wouldn't that also be liters? And so liters divide out, and I end up with moles again. So moles before the dilution equal moles after the dilution. Now to clear that up even more, I like to talk about baking orange juice. Many of you may have made frozen concentrated orange juice. I know we make that all the time at our house. It's less expensive than buying the pre-made or the fresh squeezed orange juice. So we'll buy the concentrated orange juice. Now I don't know how many oranges are in a can of frozen concentrated orange juice. I'm just going to make up a number to make it simple. Let's say that there are 10 oranges in that can. All right. And to make uh, orange juice uh, using this method, we add one can of frozen concentrated orange juice to a pitcher. So this is my pitcher. Does that look like a pitcher to you? A little spout there. All right. So we're going to add one can. And that one can has 10 oranges in it, doesn't it? I'm going to dump those inside my little orange juice pitcher. All right, and what do we do next? Well, if you read the instructions on the can, it says add three cans, that meaning these cans, of water to your concentrate. So, okay, I have 10 oranges before, and let me see, I'm going to add three cans of water. So I dump that in there, and that brings the volume up to here, and then I get my little stirring spoon, and I stir that up, and I have my orange juice that's ready to drink. Now think about this. How many oranges did I have inside this pitcher before the dilution? I had 10. Very good. How many oranges did I have after I added water? That's right. I still had 10 oranges. The number of oranges did not change before and after the dilution. And the same thing is true with this molarity uh, M1V1 equals M2V2 equation. The number of moles of solute now, in my case, it was concentrated orange juice, or oranges, did not change when I made the dilution. So this equation works quite nicely. And if you forget it, just think of making frozen concentrated orange juice. So let's try a couple of these. Um, let's see. Um, we have 12 molar hydrochloric acid. Now, that's stock solution. If you go into our back room, we have a special cabinet that's locked. It says acid on it. And that's where we store are acids, obviously, and in there you will find a bottle of stock hydrochloric acid solution. It's 12.0 molar. It's concentrated. You can't get it any more concentrated than that. Well, we never use 12.0 molar hydrochloric acid in the laboratory. It's much too dangerous. We don't need it for any practical lab application. So I oftentimes dilute it for you. So let's say I want to make 250 milliliters of a 2.5 molar solution. How many milliliters of the concentrate do I need? Well, let's try my equation. M1V1 equals M2V2. M1 would be my 12.0 molar hydrochloric acid. V1, I don't know how much of that I'm going to need, so I'm going to put X. Okay. Now, we used uh, liters in our example up here, but we can use milliliters as well. It doesn't really make a difference what unit the volume is because you'll see it works out regardless equals M2. What's the molarity that I want to make? Yeah, 2.50 molar, and I want to make 250 milliliters of that solution. So what would X equal? Well, that's pretty easy. 
we're going to solve for x by multiplying 2.5 times 250, and we'll divide by 12.0. We'll see what we get. So 2.50 times 250.0 divided by 12.0 gives me to three significant figures 52.1 milliliters. So that means I would need 52.1 milliliters of the 12.0 molar hydrochloric acid to make your so solution. Now the way I would do this is I would get a volumetric flask and I'll try to draw a volumetric flask over here for you. They have very long necks and they are made special. Each one holds a specific volume. There's a little line here that tells me that that is 250.00 mils. And I would put some water in there to begin with. So that's just H2O. And then I would take my 52.1 milliliters of 12 molar hydrochloric acid and add it to that flask. And I'd add it slowly. When you add acid to water, it's an exos exothermic solvation process, so it can get hot. All right, then I would add water to what we call the mark. So I'd add water to this mark right there and I would complete my dilution. Notice I didn't add acid. The amount of acid or the moles of acid was the same both before and after the dilution. So I would add water to the mark. And I would make sure that that was stirred and ready for you uh, to use in the laboratory. So that's commonly done by me uh, to prep for labs and you when when you get to more advanced labs where you have to make your own solutions We'll do that quite a bit. It becomes a very very handy calculation. You use it all the time All right, try example 13 on your own. So pause the video and then come back and we'll see how you did All right Welcome back. I want to find the molarity of a solution when I take 30 milliliters of a two molar sodium sulfate solution and I dilute that by adding water to 150 mils. So what's the molarity of the resulting solution? Okay, no big deal. Let's just plug and chug. M1 is 2.0 molar. V1 would be my 30.0 milliliters, wouldn't it? Equals M2. We do not know what my molarity is going to be. We're solving for that. Times V2, and we're going to make a total volume of 150 mils of solution. So let's solve for x, which will be the molarity of my diluted solution. So we're going to take 2.0 times 30.0 divided by 150.0. So 2.0 divided by 30.0, or sorry, not divided by, times 30.0, divided by 150.0. And I end up to two significant figures with a 0 0.40 molar solution. Okay, turns out you can use the same equation for molality or percent by weight, etc. It works out quite nicely regardless of the concentration unit. All right? Okay, kiddos, a little longer video today. Sorry about that. Um, we'll probably do a review of molarity, molality, weight percent, and mole fraction in our next video. So we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.